It takes more than just an apple a day to keep the doctor away. Shape up with body and soul. Welcome into Body and Soul on 938 Live. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Daniel Martin. Let's take a health check together, shall we? In today's edition, we take a look at the aspect of bone jaw regeneration. When is that important? Well, we're going to find out today. Are you aware that bone loss, where teeth is extracted, can lead to shrinkages in the upper and lower jaws, leading to a collapse of lips and cheek support and an eventual appearance of premature aging? Now, today, more than ever, advances in medicine and dentistry have led to new and expanded areas of treatment. One such area is uh, the issue of bone regeneration in the jaw bones and around the teeth. Procedures to repair and grow new bone, unheard of just a few years ago, are now part of routine dental surgical care. What's uh, quite exciting as well is that uh, a latest local development actually naturally promotes bone regrowth through a scaffolding process. We're going to find out a little bit more about that and how it promotes natural bone healing and how will this aid you in your dental health is the bigger question and how will this also help in terms of preventing premature aging we're finding out more today with professor victor fun he's an assistant professor with the faculty of dentistry at nus nus rather and if you have any questions about aesthetic surgery or bone loss in your jaws or dental implants or the aspect of tooth extraction now's the time to call in at 669-11938 that's 669-11938 professor fun welcome Hi there. to the program Hi there. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think we want to take the first step of understanding this issue. I mean, we talk about bone degeneration. It sounds rather serious at that as well. Uh, give us an overview of the issue and, and understanding of what exactly bone degeneration in the jaw is and why is it occurring? Okay. Well, it's not really something too frightening because uh, it's perhaps part of aging, really. Mm. Uh, bone resorption uh, is more, uh, more perhaps uh, correctly called... Uh, or thinning the bone uh, uh, is, happens to to everybody really. You can lose the bone in terms of volume uh, or in terms of the the size itself. Okay, uh, in the rest of the body, as you can see in patients who have osteoporosis, you no know, brittle bone, and, but certainly in the jaw bone, that, which is what we are interested in today. Uh, one of the main thing uh, that happens to jaw bone, especially the bone around the teeth. Uh, is that uh, they, they require functional stimulus. So if someone has a teeth and is using it, chewing and functioning, that provides a stimulus to maintain the bone, the little bit of bone we call the alveolar bone. This is actually in co accordance to a very old principle first described in the 18, 1800s uh, by a chap called Wolf, right? Terms Wolf's Law. The body socket itself uh, supports the tooth, and uh, when the tooth is biting in function, it helps to maintain the bone volume there, all right? Now, the minute someone has his teeth taken out or tooth taken out, then uh, the stimulus is gone, right? And so the resorption process starts to happen. Right, that sounds very similar to, you know, when we talk about weight load-bearing activities being important for build, building up bone density right. in your legs. It's a similar concept. That's right, that's right. So it's the same if you talk about, you hear about people in space, they need to constantly, uh, you know, exercise and motivate. And one of the major problems if you stay too long in space, I'm not mm. a space expert, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you, you lose bone uh, mass and volume, you know. Indeed, right? yeah. so it's all about the importance of, and when that is no longer there, yeah. then it's going to happen uh, that that resorption will start happening. That's will it right. be centralized and localized around the area where the extraction has occurred? That's right. Uh, essentially, a tooth socket is the one that uh, supports the tooth. Right? So it's a hole, right? And where the tooth, uh, where the roots of the tooth is embedded in it. So the minute the tooth, the particular tooth is removed, the area there should uh, form back bone as a natural process. But uh, as a natural process as well, because of the lack of the functional stimulus, which, you, uh, which previously was uh, present because of the tooth, uh, the bone mass that uh, sort of regenerates back uh, has lost its uh, volume and its height. And that's, that's the problem. Yeah. Who is this problem likely to affect, Dr. Fun? Is it, um, I mean, we're obviously talking about people who have to have bone extractions, but can it naturally occur for other individuals as well? Yeah, as long as you, you have a tooth extracted, then it will happen, whether you're very healthy or not healthy. Uh, but uh, more importantly, uh, uh, all the patients who have lost the teeth, actually, 
And in fact, uh, it's been known now, those people have lost the teeth and uh, all along we've been replacing missing teeth with dentures, right? And the loading of denture is quite unnatural, really. It's not quite the same as uh, having a tooth embedded in the jawbone. So the loading itself, which is uh, excessive pressure o- over the, over the uh, denture bearing areas, can cause uh, the bone to thin as a result. Right? That can actually contribute to bone thinning. That's right. Right. And also, I mean, uh, of course, there are people who have a, a so-called medical s- problems like uh, diabetes, osteoporosis, so they tend to lose their bone as well. Yeah. So in that sense, would you say that this is something that's fairly common? Do a lot of people suffer from this aspect? Yes. As long as someone has a teeth or has his tooth uh, removed, then that, that is going to happen. Yeah. Like it or not. <laughs> like it <laughs> or not. Unless something has been done. Uh. Right. So, the, so we got, are we seeing a lot of people who do have that problem and don't even realize it in yeah, local contexts? Yes. Uh, I, uh, certainly is the case because certainly... Uh, I think at the moment now, uh, there, there are a lot of developments and as you said earlier on, uh, we have now techniques and there are a lot of techniques been developed to help to preserve this uh, bone, a process what we call alveolar uh, bone uh, preservation, you know. Uh, uh, and uh, perhaps it's not quite well known yet uh, to people that well in fact you can do that right uh, and I, I think we, we all know we all hear our grandmothers or mothers having teeth extracted but uh, to be honest we don't actually think a lot about uh, what what happens then right so most of the time uh, the the implant dentist which is now uh, there are a lot of people doing dental implants we have to deal with uh, because basically after the tooth is ex- extracted you lose some bone right and you lose some of it and then uh, if there's nothing been done at the time of extraction, then uh, the implant dentist is going to put an implants. If it does have a problem with uh, lack of bone, then he'll do something to augment the bone. So it's more like uh, preparing the process rather than thinking about it and pre- trying to prevent it at the moment. Because really a lot of people may not be aware of it. Yes. Um, how quick is that rate of progression, Dr. Fan, in terms of the resorption? Okay. It's been said that uh, actually up to uh, 50% of the alveolus of the, uh, of the bone, uh, so that means that's the bone that uh, holds the teeth, uh, can be lost okay, over gradually over time. Up to 50%? Yes, that's right. But uh, in fact, the proportion of it happening, most of it actually can happen within the first few uh, months actually, right? Right. Not that 50% of the whole jaw bone study dis- disappear away, but gradually it's a, a sort of a... Uh, situation like uh, sort of gradually increasing uh, over the time and especially it all depends on what you do afterwards whether you're putting putting uh, a denture on or things that accelerate the bone loss right uh, and the first few months actually the most crucial a lot of the bone loss happened within the first uh, three to f- uh, four months uh, and uh, there's a time when uh, most of it will, 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 will will manifest itself like, gradually. You know, will you be this. able to feel any of this? Will it be affecting the way... Uh, will there be pain? Will there be uh, sharp pains in any way? No. Can you see it? No, you, you can't see it. Uh, I mean, it's a na- natural healing process uh, mm. as well. When you pull out a tooth, the, uh, the, the tooth socket will will bleed. That's uh, anyone who has teeth taken out will know. <laughs> and you bite, on a piece of, <laughs> you bite it on a piece of gauze and uh, blood clots and then that's it, it stops that's bleeding. It. And, and, and then, right? but what we know is that the clot itself starts to shrink, okay? and, uh, and essentially the amount of bone that's formed back will be less than what it w- you will have, certainly. So how does this affect you in the long run, Dr. Fan? Is this going to have, if you don't treat it, if you don't take care of it, if you have an extraction, you leave it there, you don't have an implant, let's say, is this going to progress and become a dental health concern? Yeah. Gra- gradually, say, if, you're not, uh, if someone doesn't plan to have an implant, right, it's likely that they're either leaving it alone, right, mm. or they do something over it to replace the tooth. Of course, there are situations where people put in a denture, which, uh, which I, I really mentioned earlier on, that can help. Uh, in fact, that would not help. That will, that will make. That will accelerate bone loss. Yes. Uh, because of the no- loading process, uh, you can leave it alone. Basically, there are a lot of people who does leave his teeth. Uh, some, especially teeth at the back, where it's not too obvious. Mm. Yeah? Uh, they they leave, leave, the, it, yeah. leave it alone, and gradually the bone just thins and thins and thins over the months and years, right? And uh, and that's that's the problem, really. Mm. At the time, if later on you decide, that, look, I I can't eat very well now. I want something, then you would have a bit of a problem there. Right. Besides the tooth extraction, are there other things that can stimulate this kind of uh, bone resorption? I mean, I've read about things like uh, defects resulting from oral cysts or tumor injuries that can happen as yeah. well. Yes. Certainly, uh, bone bone loss uh, is a very g- general term, but if you talk about resorption, yes, trauma is uh, one big factor. In fact, I do see a lot of this now. We are talking about younger people now, right? Mm. Uh, and who are involved in games, uh, in the military, accidents, whatever, right? 
uh, and they come in having the teeth uh, avulsed or fractured off, right? And along with it, 